Hello, Twitch. Welcome. How is everyone this lovely day? Happy Sunday to ya. We got our ribs still going. Looking a little murky in there. That, that wasn't intended. Not 100% sure what happened here. I did go ahead and double bag the short ribs just in case it was a bag failure. Which it might have been. But on the other hand, it was still like sealed. Like it, it still was a nice tight package of it wasn't allowing air in. So how is it allowing other stuff out if it is? So I'm sort of maybe of the mind that maybe I dropped something into the water or something. Not a hundred percent sure what happened there. Welcome in everyone. Hi Bun Buns. Hi Plant Panda. Welcome in Plant Panda. Glad to see you. Games Master XP. Welcome, welcome. Let's get started with a little coffee. I didn't grind any coffee for you. Apologies, I tried to do that before the stream most of the time. Hopefully everyone's having a great day. I've had a pretty good Sunday so far. Drinking a little wine tonight. We got some Zinfandel. Uh, we'll see if that will work with whatever we've got left with these ribs as far as marinating liquid. Um, we'll see if we can create a gravy out of that. Maybe add some coffee to that. I don't know. Day off, awesome. I mean, it's Sunday. I mean, hopefully you had some free time to yourself today. And what I'm doing here is starting with a balloon, and we're gonna let this sit for a good 30 40 seconds after you do the initial pour. And then we're gonna do the rest of our water once we've allowed that to do its thing, which is prank. That is not what you're supposed to do. But the, the idea of the initial bloom is there's a lot of trapped CO2 in those beans, whether they've been ground up or not. And so when you're adding that water, you're releasing a lot of that. New phones give me no notifications all the time, and I've sort of half decided to leave them on to begin with, just to see what ones I really want to get rid of, in case I over blanketed getting rid of them in the past. But it is sort of annoying here too. 
have that going off while we're here on stream. That was not the intentions. Oh, our kettle's warming back up again, too. That was not intended. So I think we're brewer, our brew is done. I told you to quiet, kettle. Stop making noise. And I finally have half and half back. I went and got some half and half today. It's been so long since I've had half and half. I am going to uh, point out early on here that we have currently a tie in our Wednesday ingredient challenge vote. At least is the last time I looked at that, which was an hour or so ago. So if anyone is really excited about either one of those prospects, I encourage you now to go and make your vote be known because you could be the deciding vote. If it comes to the point where I look at it later on and it's still a tie, we'll flip a coin here on stream. And to be honest, I don't know that I really have a preference between these two this week. Cheers, everyone. Happy Sunday. Oh, that's yummy with some half and half in it. I was talking to you last stream about how I was trying a new coffee with, you know, this beautiful chocolate profile that's independently a different chocolate from a different roast the same people put out. This is my first time trying this coffee with some cream in there. Where do we start tonight? Definitely not with that. These are going until 619? Well, how much longer we got? We got another 40 minutes on these before these are even close to done. They can sit there much longer, and I actually intend to give these a bit of a sear, unlike I did with the Asabuka. We got a bunch of herbs to chop up. We got some potatoes to prep, but the potatoes are probably lower on the list of things that need to be done. I'm actually debating starting off with chickpeas tonight. The chickpeas have to be almost done like last minute for the rest of the salad. So I should probably prep the rest of the salad before I add the, or before I fry the chickpeas. I think that's going to be my plan to action there. Uh, so let's get the rest of that salad together. Eh, let's not use this one today. We'll start with this celery that I only have out because I bought it today and I was going to use some in the salad, so I left it out. Give these a rinse off.
Yeah, I sort of decided on... I am I was... I still am almost torn on which way I should be doing them. I want to sort of roast them, but we're going to do mashed. Because I think it's going to go best with the short ribs. And with our plate. And we sort of have two starches as it is tonight. We've got the chickpeas and we've got the... Taters. They call me chickpea salad. Nice panda. Been lurking in the backgrounds. Want a little crunch, not a lot of crunch. So we're going pretty thin with these, but not quite paper thin. Just to warn you, I have no clue on roulette if it's going to work well for you not. I, I enabled it one night on a whim. I believe it requires a couple of people in chat to join along. Peeling the skin off of the shallot here. Realized I was doing that off camera. Apologize for that.
Awesome, Bun Buns. Glad to hear that. I know you're a little bit under the water lately. Glad to hear you're feeling better. Well, not just better, but feeling good. Feeling amazing. Amazing! I was so happy yesterday playing around with the old phone and the new thing for stream yesterday. That was quite fun. I still got to set up a lot of scenes. Yeah, it's a yellow carrot. So right now we got sort of Mirapaw. We got uh, shallot, celery, and I'm gonna do some yellow carrot. Carrot. So I'm keeping some of the stem with the cilantro here, but certainly not all of it. We're just taking the bottom leaves and top floret. in a grocery store today it was it was in a Whole Foods today and the guy was replacing the bags it, it just it just strikes me so odd how this this whole thing went on earlier today he was replacing the bags and it looked like he was replacing perfectly good ones with entirely new rolls which I didn't really understand the methodology behind that but um, regardless, I go and take one of these new bags off of this new roll, and it's sealed on both ends. I'm like, what the heck is this junk? 
and I take and so I just sort of stuff that in my cart or my uh, basket, grab another one, and that one's the exact same way. I'm like, this whole roll's like this, and I went over to the talk to the guy. And I'm like, you just replace this with a roll that a bags that are sealed on both ends. It's a piece of junk. He's sort of like, yeah, the bags are junk. And then just doesn't care. It's sort of like, how do you get into that mindset that, you know, you're too lazy to even replace a set of bags that's defective? <laughs> I mean, I just sort of shrugged it off and walked away, but... And I just immediately, in my mind, went to the fact that this is a problem that would only occur in a corporate environment where, you know, this dude is just doing his job and he doesn't give a crap about the customer. instead of actually trying to solve a simple job and make everyone happy. I think that's enough for our little salad here. We'll give this a light, rough chop. Battle's ready, too. Then again, I mean, most of my respect for amp for uh, Whole Foods went out the window when Amazon took it over, and it really didn't even have all that much. With I, I, I actually initially thought Amazon taking over Whole Foods was an amazing idea, and they were going to do a great job of it. They've certainly uh, profited on this whole. COVID order and pick up, at least my small little one here is always booming with, like they've taken out the, the whole sit down eating area of what used to be there in the Whole Foods and it's now just like dedicated pre-packing area for delivery pickups. I don't get a lot of things in the world. So much of what we're forced to live with is just the status quo that people don't want to improve. Let's do our battle. Let's get some kills. Ooh, I can get everyone in this. Oof. A lot of early losses in this one. I think we got it, though. We, we got our core still. We got... Tank, some damage, and a healer. That's all you really need in Dungeons and Dragons.
Mercury. Mercury. Edgy Hercules getting them kills. Bun Bun's getting a scroll. Hudaz getting some gold there. It's a nice pickup. Now for a questionable map. Who knows what's gonna pop up? I'm gonna actually I'm gonna put it on the top. Back to cutting our green onions here. So Wednesday we're going to be doing, hopefully, the, the plan is Wednesday, we'll have the new camera set up running. I got a, I have plans for a big house clean out that I want to do beforehand. And I have plans for, and I got to get a bunch of scenes redone for the new camera set up too. And I'm thinking of changing a couple of them up. Might as well while we're at it. Great one, Plant Panda. Thanks for joining in. Hope you have a great evening. Someone else online using these same green onions and was like, I didn't really like the way that they look, but they seemed to swear by them. And so I thought I'd give them a shot. You know, thinking maybe, well, maybe they got amazing flavor that the sort of like halfway out look of them, you know, doesn't matter for. But no. I just need some different green onions in these. Well, I'm not a doctor, but that doesn't sound great. Maybe you should go ask an actual doctor that one. I don't know. What are you putting it with? I would normally just say garlic. And lots of it. But some people love mint with their their lamb. There's other things people love putting in with their lamb too. I need to sit down and enjoy a little, well, not sit down, but I need to stop and enjoy some of this delicious coffee that I made earlier.
Gotta be getting close with those short ribs. I mean, when I looked earlier, it was only 40 minutes. So a lot of lemon juice in there. I'm gonna do some salt, pepper, some other seasonings. Add some vinegar to contrast. But that's basically the only dressing we're doing for this. Get some pit de calamatas, calamata olives. Let's give them a real rough chop here. Yeah, there's a couple of light, bright, really acidic, bright green olives out there. There's so many varieties of olives. Like... There's so many varieties of just about anything that's grown compared to what most people think. I was watching a video on basil earlier today and I seriously doubt this guy. I think there's probably way more than this. But even still, he was pointing out that there's over 60 varieties of basil that are edible. And there's many more that are inedible. And so, I think there's probably hundreds in reality. But, I mean, how many basils do you see in the store? And it's because just about everything that's in the store has been grown and packaged and developed to make it to the store. It's really the big difference between and where I think packaged products are really going to shine in the future is they can have, you know, like the best strawberries that you can grow cannot handle even the weight of another I mean, they can't even really be picked without becoming mush. And if you're a commercial operation, you can use that immediately and put that into something and, and utilize that amazing flavor. You can't sell that at the store to someone. I forgot I had these, so I'm, I'm adding these in.
I'll give you another example of how many things there are out there for you to grow. I've shown this on stream once before, but this book. This is a catalog of seeds. I mean, There are a lot of things that you can grow that you will not find at the store. And that's just one company. Like that's one family business. This can add a little sweetness to the salad that I wasn't originally planning on. But it's really going to add some nice color pop to it. Well, there's the realities of it. Most people don't have the time to properly dedicate to it. And... It's something that can very easily cost you money rather than make you money. And let's be honest, a lot of people that are growing things in many cases are buying seedlings. Already started off by a farmer somewhere else, which it's about the, it's the easiest way, but when you think about it, okay, a farmer is gonna grow a ton of seeds. The plants that he's going to plant are the nice ones. The ones that he's going to sell are not. But at the same time, uh, the difference in price between, you know, I mean, you can buy like 30 seeds for like $2 or you can buy a single plant that started in four inches tall for like four or five bucks. And, and that's where people... Start with seed, but it takes a lot more work.
So yeah, the arugula, and I added those peppers in there now. Now we're starting to look a little bit more like a salad. <laughs> I would be worried if these were hot. These are very sweet. These are not going to be irritating much of anything. The real problem is when you go to the bathroom. All right, we're gonna let that hang out for all until we're done with the rest of the, everything else. Someone says mango or papaya and salsa, I just immediately think they're using habaneros. Most of the other ones are too much of a chili flavor or too much of a deeper, darker flavor to them to Med well, uh, meld well with fruit. Pulling off the extra leaves on the sides here, since I'm sautéing these or pan searing these, the leaves are just going to char and bitter even more. So we'll ditch those. And probably toss them into that salad. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. What is this? These are the leaves from the broccoli or the broccoli rod, whatever they sold this as, that I'm chopping up. And rather than throw in the compost, I'm gonna throw them in my salad.
time we got here? Two minutes, okay. As I said earlier, when that is done, it is not done, but it will be done in 48 hours. Thank you for doing that, Bun Buns. I'm glad someone remembered to do that at some point. cut myself for a second there. I did not. Just a little piece of pepper. That is our 48 hours up. You gonna stop after that or you keep beeping? You keep beeping. Nice. So we're going to add to our garlic some crushed red pepper. No paprika. A little shake of cayenne. And pepper. We'll add salt when it goes in the pan. So now we can set that aside. That's ready to go when 
everything else is ready for that. Let's get our potatoes going. Still some warmth in this. That's sort of this is almost an hour old coffee now. Yeah, just about. Last two minutes get units on the battlefield for our next Stream Raiders battle. These are a different variety of potato than I normally buy for the small rounds. These are, uh, I bought these when I was at Target for last week's ingredient challenge. So these are Target brand potatoes. To me, they seem a little bit more uh, brown than golden to me. The really russets that just haven't really developed. Actually, a lot of them look like russets to me. We'll see. We'll get those heating up on the burner here. Okay, what else do we got still left to do here? Let's get our chickpeas ready to go. We need to drain our chickpeas because I'm using canned chickpeas. Let's just cheat and use that because it's handy and this because it's handy. We'll just let that dry out a bit. Let's do our battle. To war. Edgy Hercules getting them kills. Bun Bun's helping out with the assists. Colorful Peanut Patrol getting the rewards, though. And you probably all want to be like over to this side of me because you're gonna have to move around this in order to get down here. So I maybe should have put myself in the center. 
but what have you. Well, let's see what we got for short ribs. We're going to need another pot here to, oh, this will work for this. We're frying in a skillet tonight so we don't have to, we can use the big boy here. Eh. Maybe not. Big boy can maybe use a scrubbing. Yep, so we had some leakage issues. But we have short ribs. I'm essentially just going to empty this bag into this bowl, but I'm going to do it somewhat carefully so that we don't disturb this meat as much. There's our short ribs. Okay. So you can pull. There's two bay leaves in there, so there's another one around here. Let's see, we got some nice. Yeah. Nice tender meat. Just basically falls apart as I touch it. We're going to take these and put these on a sheet pan. Careful, like bone side down. See if it was better to pull this. Oh, I maybe should have left those on. So this piece just completely fell off, so this is just going to be tasting fodder. See where we're at with things. Wow! It's fruitier and lighter than I expected it to be. Not fruit, um... Acidic, lighter... Um... There was no wine in this. I, I used vinegar, I used some other things. It came out really well for not using wine in this base. That's what I was getting at. Oh, we got some other yummies in here that we gotta pick out.
Oh, that's the black garlic. We can ditch the black garlic at this point. It has given up its flavor to this liquid. As has the bay leaf. So I think we got a majority of our solids out of that. I'm not going to strain it. I want the flavor anyways. We'll put that back on the burner over here. We'll start reducing that down a little bit. I actually don't know if we need to reduce that really at all. Or at least going to keep it warm. We at least got to thicken it. Maybe add... Got to thicken it. Maybe add some wine to it, but I think it's going to be fine without. Oh yeah, I'm really liking this coffee that I bought. This this batch was a good good batch. Oven. We need to blast our oven. Actually, we need to blast our broiler. We pull our pizza stone out. Since we don't need that tonight. Before we start in with our broiling of our lovely pieces of well-cooked meat. And there's sort of a... Some people believe that you should be at this point refrigerating these and searing them after refrigeration. I don't know I necessarily believe that. I, I do like... probably easier to not overcook something that you've spent so much time trying to cook to only a certain point. But I think it's probably not a better product. If you get what I'm going, I mean, uh, splitting hairs at that point. But we're going to put a little salt on top of each of these. Little fancy mold and salt. And we're going to hit that with a starch slurry. So we got some corn starch there. We'll add some cold water, hopefully cold water.
just enough to liquefy everything. You still want it to actually be sort of a thick liquid when you're pouring it in. It's sort of hard to tell when you got enough liquid in there or not. As he does that over his short wrist. getting there. But we're now successfully boiling over here on the stove. And take these tongs out of there. Switch that for a whisk. Give my hand a rinse off, get all the starch off of it. small batch. And instantly it starts thickening up on us. It's uh, got a bit more gloss to it. It's ribboning more as I s stir it. on that and let that sit for a moment. Let's throw our <laughs> well to be honest colorful peanut this started off as a necessity thing with working long hours things I would make I would have one or two days off where I could do things around the home get everything set for work and I would make myself giant project meals those days that would last me out the rest of that whole week. And so I would eat things for like a week long, get absolutely sick and tired of them. Uh, and the more I got into doing things my way, running my own business, setting things up my own schedules, that sort of turned into several times a week doing smaller projects. And now we're down to, you know, four or five of them a week here. I don't know if that came back up to a full boil there, but we're gonna add a bit more heat to that sauce. Um, potatoes. We need our cooking liquid for our potatoes. I've taken the heat off of the potatoes. I'm just gonna set them up there. We need some We need fan running, that's for sure. I'm sweating like mad. But we need some cream and butter warmed up to add into our potatoes. So we'll add some half and half and some butter here to the pan. That's definitely up to a boil now, so now I'll cut the heat on that once again. All right, uh, do we do the, well, this is last minute thing here. We gotta do frying our chickpeas first. We'll throw these in the oven and then we'll finish our greens after that.
can go ahead and add our seasonings for our potatoes to this. So heavy with the salt, MSG, back pepper. And a little hint of garlic, not a lot. We're not turning garlic potatoes, we're adding a hint of garlic to them. While this cools down, we'll heat up this pan in front. We have our leftover prosciutto frying oil. So it's got some prosciutto flavor to it, hopefully a little bit. We're gonna use a little bit of that to do our frying. I'm gonna add a little fresh virgin olive oil to that too. And we're gonna fry these. Just like that in the pan. Nice high heat. Let's wait until that oil is really nice and hot. Normally a very useful liquid. I don't use aquafaba a lot, but if you're a vegan, that, that stuff's like gold. Let's get myself a wipe down and let's clean my hands. I keep touching my face because I'm sweating and it's just not good. I mean I'm just cooking for myself so it's not like I'm gonna ruin my own food but it's not good to show it off that way. Cut the heat on the cream and butter there and actually we'll switch this pan over for that one and doing so carefully because this is oil and since we're working with oil I'm thinking let's give these chickpeas a little bit of an extra dry off here because they're still looking pretty moist to me. And we don't want that. Yeah, I worry from time. I mean, I'm only cooking for myself, and so there's a tendency to not worry about that. And I know I used to be, like, much more strict about this when I first started streaming. But, yeah, it's one of those things that I worry about is whether I'm, I lose people because I do something silly and not care because it's just for me. Nice hot pan over here. Not as quite as hot as it was before. But that is hot as that pan is going and it is smoking.
This is taking longer than I would like. May have overcrowded this pan and lost the temp too much. Yeah, I think I put overcrowded that pan and maybe even had it slightly too cool, even though it was smoking. Two knives, a big chef knife, and a bread knife. It's just about all you need. Most people don't even have two. Most of them just have that offset bread knife. And to be honest, for 90% of life, that's all you need. Heat off now. Chickpeas. We're going to salt these. Paprika, er, uh, cayenne. Paprika. And cumin. There's our starting salad for tonight with a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna keep this pan going. I'm gonna use the same pan for our greens tonight. Why not? So we'll set that aside, let that just hang out for a minute. Get another four minutes on our battle. So we got our garlic and seasonings and all that good jazz for with our profit rob. I'm sure that pan's still somewhat warm.
Okay. Going in under the broiler. Cutting the heat on that now. Uh, those I'm going a little bit longer on. The tops in them are going to be a little bit past on, but I want to be able to actually chew on them and not be chewing on a twig. So that's sort of the downside to these. to strain our potatoes. Hey Moss, welcome in. little bit of a sear on the outside of those ribs as they sit at that underneath that broiler. Let's do our battle. things are not cooked at all. Yeah, they are. Never mind. They're just being a problem to start. We got this one, folks. I'm sorry. I can't pay too, too much attention to this battle. Got too much going on here tonight. Potatoes are a pain to get started here tonight.
but I'm pretty certain that these are russets and and they're just calling them golds I have a feeling I'm not buying potatoes at Target again anytime soon oh beef 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 Woo. there's our roasty toasty short ribs now all nicely brown there Thank you for that resub, Moss. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with your prime sub, even better. But you can even just sort of looking at it tell there's a little bit more of a stringiness, a little bit more fiberiness to this than that beautiful Yukon Gold smooth mash that you get. Okay. Who's gonna get the 200 gold here? Bid pickup win for this one. For this one, Colorful Peanut Patrol getting our kills tonight. Lin J helping out with the assist. Colorful Peanut picking up that 200 gold. Congrats. Be good for some upgrades there. And we're gonna head down here in Mr. Blue Chest now. Oh, do we start another battle? I think we're pretty much wrapped up here tonight. I got wine to drink. We can hang out for one more battle. Excuse me, burping and talking at the same time here. Let's do one more battle. One last battle. Put a tank out here in the corner. We're gonna need, what are these? Ranged. We're gonna want a rogue or two over here to protect our backside and go after that. I would say at least two, maybe three of them. Otherwise, pile up on me. Oh yeah, those are russets. Um, I can't throw things at chat with my new camera set up. Monday's gonna be my last chance to throw stuff at you. Throw stuff at my new camera setup, I might break something. Which is sort of funny because it, it looks like it's almost in the same spot. Adding that little bit more cold butter in there.
What was I adding earlier to my potatoes from the stove? I was adding cream and butter that I had melted so it was closer to the temp of the potatoes. You don't want to add cold things like I did there with the butter to the potatoes. It's not going to work well for you. Add a little bit of heat here, just for a moment. We're gonna melt this butter into our gravy on the stove here. And then I added a bunch of seasonings that I intended for the potatoes anyways in with the half and half and butter that I had poured in there. I'm gonna throw these in just for a mother second just to keep them warm. But I'm actually gonna turn that broiler off so it's just the residual heat. Let's make sure our potatoes are smooth for our dish here.
So there's our first dish of the evening. Am I going to throw a little parsley on that? Let's throw a little parsley on that. take our first photo with our new phone. Oh wow, is that closed in on it? I don't want that. I want that. What I normally take here. Oh wow, I like the shutter sound is much quieter. So that is main course dinner tonight, everyone. That's going to go along with our chickpea salad. Or our fried chickpea salad. What's in the mash? This is just a straight mash. Uh, I bought some baby po yellow potatoes. Yellow potatoes. Pretty certain that they're russets after looking at them closer after having them home and cooking them and trying them here. Um, they're definitely a bit more waxy than I would like for making mashed potatoes. But they're starchy, not waxy. Um... That's actually probably my biggest letdown so far in this dinner. The rest of this turned out great. Nice inner ear crunch on the broccoli rob. Yeah, it's my first time trying these potatoes too, by the way, if you're just joining in. I went to shop at Target earlier this week 
Uh, and so that, that was a result of what Target sells for potatoes. Which I went to the campus in Hyde Park when I went there many years ago. It was pretty much the only thing. You had the California campus, but it wasn't really a full-time school yet. It was just really like starting when I was there. Um, certainly didn't have Singapore or uh, San Antonio. I think those are the other ones. Or is it Austin? Forgetting where all of them are now. <laughs> but yes, I spent a, a, a fair amount of time in P-Town. That, that good old uh, gravesite of IBM. Um, man, I want some Kennedy's fried chicken now. Damn it. Kennedy's fried chicken and Ever Ready Diner at like four in the morning are like the two things that are like, I wish I still had from back there. Half mentioned for Naples pizza. Uh, let's get this chickpea salad to try. We are very loosely following uh, a food TV recipe here from Zacharian for fried chickpeas. Mm -hmm. All sorts of city and freshness there. Oh my. Olives and the peppers work great. Thank you for that follow bun bun lady. And then we got our 48 hour short ribs, which should just pull apart for me. Those are holding a bit stronger than I want them to. Didn't quite break down that membrane as much as I would have liked. Meat tastes amazing though. Thank you for that, fellow Cartha. And how's our sauce for our thin gravy? A lot of that same flavor from the short rib. Yeah, that membrane around the bone just didn't quite cook. The rest of it's doing pretty good, but it's that membrane right around that bone. Eating with my fingers though, it's not proper on stream. Have a great one, Hud. Thank you for joining in. I'm gonna drink some wine now. I should have opened this a little while ago. We've got a Zinfandel tonight. It's been a minute since I've had a Zinfandel. Uh, Lake County. I have not tried this vineyard before, but it is all from Lake County, so relatively small geographic profile to our Zinfandel and I don't know that I've had many Zinfandels from up in Lake County I've certainly had them in from Sonoma and Lodi do have a screw cap Ooh. That's got some... There's some definite, like, leather, tobacco-y, um, deep, dark 
leathery, yeah, just rich smell into this. And, and there's an undernote of some sort of, like, deep red fruit. I, I can't really place it. Nice. Nice initial hit of barrel spice or maybe a little pepper along that line. Just a little bite right at the beginning. And then it just mellows out to all of this fruit. This is hitting way above its price point. This is about a $15 bottle. This is tasting, this is some yumminess here as long as this doesn't just completely disappear with more air. Nice colorful peanut. It's been a while since I've stocked up. My rack is empty right now, actually. I actually just picked up this bottle by itself for tonight, which is not how I should be buying wine. This is not the way to buy wine. Yeah, really nice, smooth wine. Really nice. Not so fruity. The fruit's most on the smell. You get a very... It's a very deep, dark uh, wine. This is... Yeah, you know, your barn, your fans, your your leather fans, your tobacco fans. Um, but it's not funky either. A lot of those you get really deep. You start getting some funk in there. There's none of that there. I'm really liking this bottle. Just from a couple of sips here. Uh, if anyone's following me on Twitter, I did just post an article here, I think it was yesterday, of the, I'm forgetting the newspaper here in San, Chronicle. The Chronicle had their annual wine tasting, which is sort of like the U.S. wine tasting. Um, I mean, you, you have, you know the names that do their own tastings and their own ratings, but as far as U.S. competitions, this was one of the big ones. And uh, so the results of that, for the most part, the, the names of show are in that article. If anyone's interested in trying some of the really well-awarded ones of this year, uh, yeah, Cloverdale Citrus Fair, sort of Sort of interesting. They have a giant wine tasting in a citrus fair. Or a, it's one of the oldest fairs that we've had in California. Or the oldest, I don't know. It's a cutesy little thing. With your your typical little traveling uh fair rides and all that jazz you have a whole lot of local foods you have a whole lot of um real it's sort of like a small state fair it's almost like cloverdale's state fair because cloverdale is, is like 30 minutes from everything else in the county and i'm really liking this salad. There's a great contrast. Nice, bright, acidic. Some thick mash. Good meal. I'm, I'm happy with tonight's dinner. My nose is going now that I'm eating. I took my allergy pill. I don't need to take it. My nose is just running. But 
been doing pretty good with keeping my, uh, I mentioned the other night I was trying to get myself on a normal go to sleep and wake up schedule and waking up in the morning normally at seven. Been going well. There's things that I could do to improve it, but I'm happy just to be back on a somewhat normal schedule. My days have seemed so much longer this week. Uh, I had a guy come and take a look at my rear gate that's broken. And he basically agreed with me that the battery is dead, but he wants to replace like half a dozen other things. I don't know if they're really necessary, but I'll leave that for my landlord to decide. Uh, I had one guy doing a really nice job of, I had a big vine all over the top of my place and had him take that down. And I'm not really liking the sounds of things. I mean, I'm, I'm hands off. I'm the tenant. I'm not the landlord and I'm not the person asking for the, it, so I'm sort of like, you know, just sitting here spying on this as far as that, but it sounds like he's really trying to turn the screws to my landlord, which is I'm not happy with that. Like, he quoted him a price for doing the job, and now he's talking about quoting him a price for properly cleaning up the job, and I'm sort of like, that's part of the estimate, dude. I mean, if it was me, if it was my money, not my landlord's money. I would have been, you know, kick rocks, dude. It, you provide an estimate, you do the whole job in the estimate. I've had people try and do that before me in my business. And it's like, you may get the couple bucks out of me, but I'm never going to use your service ever again. Um... I had a welder do that to me when I was doing my business. Uh, I, I hired a welder to... He did a horrible job of it, too. I, I want to completely redo what he did. But I had him weld in supports for the... Underneath the oven in my mobile trailer. and Or in my trailer. I guess most trailers are mobile. Um... <laughs> And yeah, he came back and, and he's like, yeah, well, I could do this for you, but I don't have to charge you this. And I was like, wasn't that part of the original deal? So he got a couple more bucks out of me, but there were so many other... I still have projects that I want to do on that trailer with welding, and I ain't calling him. In fact, I really do need to do some wel a welding project on it. I gotta fix the floor on it too. I've been procrastinating on both of these since the business shut down. The floor needs to be, re it has a spot where I had something really heavy fall on it and it fell right on the corner of like the seams of the plywood. And so the plywood all sort of bent in the corners and the linoleum floor broke underneath it. And so, I gotta patch up the wood and redo the linoleum over the top, and I've been, gotten to that. I need to redo the linoleum underneath the oven. I am, Peanut. Uh, I, the, I'm in my rental house. Uh, from... For about five, six years, I was running a small business out of my mobile kitchen which I have not shown on stream. I don't know if I even have pictures online anymore of it. Probably not accessible right, definitely not accessible right now. Um, at least under my domain. But, yeah, I have a mobile kitchen. Um, it's been sitting in storage for a little while. Hey, New York Slice. Welcome in, how you doing this evening? Hopefully your Sunday is treating you well. We're just sort of chilling out here the last couple minutes waiting on our last uh, stream readers battle. I've got these 
lovely 48 hour short ribs that I have been pecking at here with mashed potatoes and broccoli rob and probably the star of the sh tonight's show I think I mean these have to be the star of the show but otherwise really happy with this cooked chickpea salad I'm gonna have to do some more stuff like this because this is just yummy Immersion circulator, 48 hours at 130 something. I think it was 55 degrees Celsius. And they turned out great. I gave them a little bit of a sear underneath the broiler in my stove. And over here we have pan seared uh, canned chickpeas with shallot, uh, celery, sweet pepper, um, carrot, yellow carrot, arugula, lemon juice, and Kalamata olive, and olive oil. I seasoned the chickpeas after I fried them. I was hoping they would get more crispy. I've, I've been trying to do fried chickpeas a couple of times now and they haven't really ever turned out the way I really wanted them to. I'm gonna have to keep toying with that because I want to create like I would love to be able to create a dish that was fried chickpeas that would be almost comparable to corn nuts. I mean like really crispy chickpeas. We have anyone guiding the raid tonight? Let's do our last battle here. Um, I've at least seen it done fried, like I sort of tried tonight. I think I overcrowded the pan and maybe did it at too low of a temp because of it. Even though the oil is smoking. So. Yeah, you definitely have to dry them out some. I did try and paper towel dry them some. Thank you for that suggestion, Colorful Peanut Patrol. Colorful Peanut getting them kills. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pronounce that name, but I appreciate your assistance with the assists. Colorful Peanut Patrol and Dynamic Sound Systems getting them scrolls. Really liking this, so thumbs up on Danton Crow Vineyard Zin. And thumbs up on my first Zin from Lake County. This has been some yummy stuff. <laughs> Slice. I, I caught what you were saying. You wanted to dry them out in the oven or toast them and then fry them. Well, let's go hang out with the Practical Escapist tonight.
want to thank everyone for joining me this evening. I appreciated your company and chat. Uh, I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of this food sitting down and just mowing down on it. I hope you enjoy hanging out with the Practical Escapist. She's a lovely food creator here on Twitch. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow night, 4.30 Pacific, my normal start time. We're going to be doing some sandwiches tomorrow. I'm going to be doing bread, my own buns. I've got some flat steak, flat meat steak to uh, maybe grill up. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to prepare that. But we're going to do some steak sandwiches. We're going to do some breakfast sandwiches. So that'll be tomorrow night. I hope you come back and join me then. Until then, thank you and good night. Bye-bye now.